everybody it is April and I am here with another silhouette studio tutorial I know lots of people have gotten new machines and are trying to get used to using new software and so I would like to be helpful so the whole point of these short tutorials is to teach you a function of your software that will hopefully help you and once you learn a little bit then maybe you'll be more comfortable exploring the more mm, I can't think of the word anyway <laughs> the harder stuff in your software so today what we're going to do is we're going to learn to weld text so that'll teach us a few things on this trip down learning silhouette studio all right so I've got my mat here and I'm in my silhouette studio I am going to click the text icon, which is on the left-hand side of the menu bar, or left-hand menu bar in the software. And that says I want to start typing once I click on my mat. And you see that this, my mouse is in the shape of a cursor. So I'm gonna click, and I am going to type HUGS in all caps. Now this is not the font that I want to use, and there are, of course, multiple ways that you can change the font. But the first thing I have to do is I have to highlight this hugs in order to change the font. I can come up here with nothing highlighted across the menu bar on the top. This Lucidia Grand is what the font is that I, for some reason, default to. So I'm going to drop down this menu and I can choose LD Tater Tots, but nothing's going to happen because I haven't highlighted my text. So in order to highlight my text, and if you can see there's a blinking cursor after the S of my hugs, I need to make my pointer a cursor. So we go through the whole gamut. We've got an arrow, we've got a double-sided arrow, we've got a hand, and if I keep going to the left, I'm going to get a cursor. So sometimes it seems like the cursor should show up more towards after the S, but it doesn't. So don't get frustrated. Just move your pointer until it becomes a cursor. And then press down your mouse button and drag across so you've got blue going across your word. Then you can drop down the box and you can choose tater tots and you've got a different font. Now for this one, I don't really want tater tots. I'm going to scroll up to the top. Another oddity about this software, I love Silhouette Studio software. It's great software. It's very, very powerful. But normally you would have your up arrow at the top and your down arrow at the bottom. For some reason in this software, I don't know why, but your up and down arrow are at the bottom. Now you can scroll like I've got my mouse and I'm scrolling up and down and that works just fine. But I just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to pick Arial Black and that is the shape that I want. So I'm going to click out here. Now what happens when you click away from your hugs and you go back and you click at one time and you really aren't sure that's the font you want? Clicking at one time is only going to allow you to move it, to make it crooked, all that stuff. So what you want to do, and if you decide that you want to modify your text some more, is you want to double click. Double clicking will get it back to the point where you can change your text. And here my cursor line is between the G and the S. I come to the end and I click doesn't seem like quite the end it's just a little bit over the s and there my cursor goes in the right spot now there are other ways there's there are always multiple ways within software packages to do things so it just depends on which way you're most comfortable with normally if I am going to modify text I use the right hand menu bar and I click the text style panel icon and that gives me the opportunity to change my font, change line spacing, character spacing, all that good stuff. But I'm happy with my hugs as far as the font goes. Now, I want to make it bigger. 
and I, it looks good to me. What I'm going to do before I get ready to weld is I'm going to set it on a grid line on my mat because for me, if I want this to be straight when I weld it together, I line it up on a line on my mat and I'm pretty confident that it's going to be straight enough. Now you can use welding for, for images as well as text, but I like to weld my text to make sentiments for cards, to make titles for scrapbook pages, because it's a lot easier to cut something out and pull the whole image up off of your mat instead of pulling up say 20 30 letters to make a title and try and place them where I want them on my scrapbook page so right now all of my letters are grouped together that isn't going to let me weld there are actually I found two ways to have them come apart or to get them apart and one way is to click weld and that will make them individually editable letters. Another way, if I undo, 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 uh, undo again, undo again, undo again, there we go. I'm back to one big word. I can right click and ungroup, which will separate them. Let me undo again because there's yet another way and that is to come up here to your menu bar across the top and you can click undo there as well. Always multiple ways. That's a, the beauty of the software. You find the way that works best for you. And if you hear whining in the background, that's Agnes because I won't throw the ball. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to attach my H and my U and my G and my S. So I could just drag my U over, make sure there's some overlap. I can choose these two images so I want them all in one box. I can come up here and I can find my weld icon and click weld. And there you go, my H and my U are all together. Now I don't really like that because Eh, it kind of, the U kind of loses its uniqueness, its, its personality because it's hooked to that H and there's this big space here. So I'm going to click undo, 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 undo. Okay. So what I want to do is I want the U to be able to keep its own personality. So I'm going to choose that U. Now, something that uh, in my classes I like to tell people, if I am trying to choose something and my pointer is an arrow, I can click all day long, that H will not be highlighted. I have to make it a hand. Once I make it a hand, then my software understands that I want to recognize the image that I am hovering over. So I'm going to make a hand, choose my U, and oh, this mouse and I quarrel. I am going to grab this green button so when my mouse cursor goes over the green and becomes an arrow in a circle with a tail, I'm going to click and then I'm going to rotate. So I'm going to rotate my U so that it's on an angle and then I'm going to drag him over and kind of lift him up because I want the bottom of my U to be on this line and that's where I'm talking about things lining up. And here there's an overlap. So now I can click on my mat and then drag over my U and my H and make sure they're in the box. I can either come up here and click weld or I can leave my mouse over my letters right click and weld. Now here my U doesn't lose its individuality but it is attached to the H now. So I'm going to put them back on the line. I'm going to choose my G 
I'm going to drag my G over and make sure I keep it, you know, about on the line where the other letters are and I'm going to overlap them. Now, I don't have to then choose all these, group these together, and weld them. I can go ahead and drag my S over. Now my S, it kind of blends in more than I would like with the G, so I'm going to click. I'm going to move my mouse pointer over the green dot until I get an arrow with the tail and then I'm going to rotate to the right and it's a little more overlapping than I want so I'm going to kind of drag it off to the side and here I can see how it's going to look without having welded it yet. So if you go ahead and move all your letters or whatever it is you're welding in place then you can click on your mat drag across all your letters, make sure there are boxes around everything, and you can go up here and you can click weld. And there you have one word hugs. Now I, isn't that weird? Huh, it has a funky box around it. Now, if you really want to know what size this is going to be, see how, it, I don't even know why I put that funky box. But anyway, just right click, and I was going to make it a compound path, but it won't let me do it. If you make it a compound path, it will tell you what size your image is actually going to be. Huh. Okay, can't make it a compound path. I'm just going to have to guess. I actually want it to be a little bigger because I want to put it on a card. Boy, that funky box around there messes with my brain. So anyway, that is how you use your text, you change your font, and you can weld. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content like this, please subscribe. And if you have any requests for videos that you would like to see to learn your new software, just leave comments down in the video description. Have a great day.